Does your team need to master Angular JS? Oasis Digital offers Angular Bootcamp, a three-day in-person workshop class for individuals or teams. Bring us to your site or send developers to ours, angularbootcamp.com. This episode is sponsored by Widgmo 5, a brand new generation of JavaScript controls. A pretty amazing line of HTML5 and JavaScript products for enterprise application development in that Widgmo 5 leverages ECMAScript 5 and each control ships with AngularJS directives. Check out the faster, lighter, and more mobile Widgmo 5. <laughs> That's making us all uncomfortable. Yeah, you guys should have said. Are we doing the doo wop group? Here we are. Bring your chair just a tiny bit. Yeah, you, know, curve you too, Chuck. Just a little bit. Yeah. 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 Anthony, we good up there? All right. All right, I'm at the so end. You're, you're uh, the caboose or the engine, whichever one. <laughs> He's the caboose. <laughs> I want to see you guys. Guys, I gotta get my makeup done. Yeah, I'll be in my trailer. In, my trailer. in chapter one, you tell her you love with all your heart. Okay, Chuck. You all right, you're the guy. Start us off. All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the Adventures in Angular podcast. Woo! Live. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious before we get started. How many of you listen to the show? One thousands person. On. There's thousands hundreds of them out there. Fifty thousand people just raised their hand in, in unison. Yeah, well, that's right. Wow. Show it. <laughs> how Thank many? You. Thank you. That was a courtesy hand raise. How many people are still in here just because they haven't bothered to go get lunch yet? Yeah. <laughs> wow. John, only only one guy good. raises in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. You don't want to wait in that line. <laughs> All right, well, um, we're going to talk a bit about what we've kind of learned at the conference and what we think it means going forward for Angular folks. I'm wondering, what, what kind of stood out to you guys yesterday and today? Go um, from the end. Go from the end. Well, yeah. first, it's just a friggin' office. awesome conference. I mean, it is so beautifully run. There's so much cool stuff here. I'm just blowing smoke your way, my man, over there. Dude, and, and Joey. <laughs> and Joe and all these guys. Joe, I mean, you know, you... you, you, you you, yeah, exactly. So we got to get that love moment out of here because it yeah. was really great. Thanks, man. I think we have a lot of fun. Like I've slept a total of like 180 minutes in the last three days, but it's like the adrenaline of the event. I don't even really feel tired. It's it's a lot of fun. Right. So what what makes the event so great, Ward? I mean, we've been to hundreds of events. What makes this one so great? There's a, a certain kind of uh, enthusiasm that's very infectious. There is the common community around a single platform, so you're not, you know, I love other conferences too, but there's a diversity of topics here. Everybody's in on one thing. They're excited. There's also something to talk about, which is where the platform is going because it's moving so fast, and it's injected, it's larded through with all kinds of these sort of fun little candy bits that keep you going. Like the Angular 3.0 announcement. That was just killer. I mean, who knew that was coming? (laughs) You didn't even see it. I did not see that coming. And we gave a release date, too, which is yeah, Which is really awesome. bold. Yeah. 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 Way to push the envelope. No, yeah. I know. That's what we're trying to do here. So I think for me what I enjoy the most is that the people behind Angular, the core team, and, and everybody that's made such valuable contributions are actually quite accessible. And so I just love just the accessibility of everyone. There's people that I look up to and I'm learning from, and it's like, oh, here's this person in the elevator or standing over here, and you can just go up and meet them. And I think that just that accessibility and that intimacy of you know, everybody is, is super amped to build awesome things, and we are, and we can just meet everybody. And there's really, I don't feel like there's really barriers or walls. Mm-hmm. There's a reason. I, I kind of want to talk about that. There's a reason that, that we didn't sell a larger quantity of tickets than last year, Lucas, and it's exactly what you're saying. Joe, do you want to talk about it? Which part? What do you... Just... Which part? Just what, why we kept the tickets down to keep the, that intimacy and, yeah, and embrace it. Well, that's exactly what Aaron said, right? We want, and, and, and what Lucas said, we want people to be able to have conversations, and we don't want anybody to feel lost in a crowd. Yeah, one other thing that I've really enjoyed is just that the talks are really concise. You know, they're all like 20 minutes long, and you just move from one to the next to the next to the next, and you don't want to get up and leave either because you might win a quadcopter, so... Right, you know, right. The, there's, yeah. or there's a bacon a, bowl, or bacon bowl, bacon bowl. I know, right? But the thing, the thing for me is just, I mean, I can sit here and they get right into their topics. They give the talk, and then you know we're right into the next thing. And yeah, so. there's there's no fluff whatsoever. Uh-uh. There's no let's tell. I was born in a log cabin in Tennessee. Everything's right 
to the point. You get a lot of good meat here. And some of the talks are only five minutes, too, which yeah. uh, those have found those really entertaining. Those ones were great, though, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah been so great. We got some more this True afternoon. True story, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what about Shy yesterday? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Funniest talk I've ever seen. Best, ever. Woo. Best, best live talk I've ever seen, for sure. I had Mishko on one side. Two seats this way, I had Brad. And the whole row, we about died laughing. Seriously. Yeah. So what was the name of that talk for people who want to go look it up? NG Watt. NG Watt. What? NG Watt. Yeah. NG Watt. Yeah. W-A-T, not W-H-A-T. It, it rules all talks. It, yeah. I've, so two years, zero standing ovations until that talk. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't think I've been at a tech talk with standing ovations. Sans like the so. Google I.O. jumping out of a blimp uh, Google Glass right. facade. That's next year, though. Yeah, no, that's yeah. next year. That's next year. NG Blimp. And so I figure Shy is a lock for next year. Oh, he's totally, yeah. Yeah. NG flying LI. Yeah. So what about some of the content? Like uh, something I really liked about this NG Conf compared to the last one, and part of its timing, working at a, a large engine like Google, you know that you can't always time an event and a release of a product where it's actually a lot of good information to come out. I felt like there was a ton of great new Angular yeah. material yesterday and today. Did you guys agree? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like... Um, it's weird to see. I've seen a lot of shifts, like almost immediately, and people going, "Oh, cool! Let's let's use TypeScript." And these are people that yesterday were like, "Or hey, maybe we should use TypeScript." And like forty-eight hours ago, they were like, "Dude, no, no, don't no, say the T word." Yeah. 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 TypeScript, <laughs> TypeScript, CoffeeScript, at script, what script? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the direction's clear now, which is good. Yeah, so yeah. I I think it's great. I've currently been trying to decide. I need a transpiler. I need a Babel, or I need a tracer, and I need to take it to my app. Um, and I've been kind of realizing what that means. You're kind of on it forever. You don't ever not be on those things. You're never going to not be on Babel. You're never you're not going to be on tracer once you're already on it. Mm-hmm. And TypeScript is exactly like that. And I've kind of been accepting that that's the reality. Mm-hmm. I think TypeScript is gives you the most, and I think it's awesome, so I'm, pretty, yeah. I'm kind of excited about what it. I, what I really like about TypeScript when I got involved, in, Wallen and I got involved in it many years ago, is it has a promise of keeping true to the next versions of, of JavaScript next script, and that's what I like, is you're not, there's not all this sugar on top that's making it more complicated and harder to get into, it's actually just JavaScript, and you can write ES5 and it is valid TypeScript, and right. now that you're doing the annotations into it, to me, that's... Mm. I was kind of hesitant last year when I heard about the at script thing. I'm like, I like this, but now there's TypeScript, there's at script, there's JavaScript. Where are we going? I like this merging. Yeah, well, well, and, and, and it, the, getting back to your point about uh, the transpilers, right? The transpilers are just transpilers. But what was that that we saw? It's tooling that goes with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the killer thing there is you're busily typing along and you get that IntelliSense. Mm-hmm. I, I've missed that in JavaScript a long time. Yeah. And the fact that it plugs into all of the different kinds of IDs that people want to have. So and, and, uh, and it's, so it's, build, it's putting all these pieces together, and I'm not even having to think about the transpiler stuff like that. And then when you look at the JavaScript code that it emits, and that's JavaScript code that I kind of would like to write. So all in all, it just seems to me to be more comprehensive and reduce the friction I'm going to have as a developer. Yeah. So and I'm if going you don't there. want classes, you don't have to use them. In it. You don't want interfaces, right, right, you don't right. have to. It's right. the, so well, there's yeah. opt-in pieces. That, that, that's the thing that Misco keeps getting up on stage and saying is, if you want to just go ES6, great. If you want to ES5, great. You know, but if you if you want these other things that we're baking into TypeScript with Angular, well, and one there thing that I can even appreciate appreciate about that messaging is I think it's just even improved over the last couple of months. With you know, look, it's it's not this way or the highway. We're not going to go kill things. That mm-hmm. just even I feel that just the keynotes for me is I felt really reassured about where Angular was going. Um, I felt like everybody just got a big old hug, including the Ember guys, which was actually pretty cool. Yeah, and cool. I'd like to see more collaboration and a more inclusive community. Yeah. And so I think yeah. not only am I excited about the language, but just the overall mindset and just messaging. I think they've really, they, you know, they took a lot of feedback and they've really improved that to their benefit. I, I totally agree. The messaging that they came out with yesterday, it was like a hug. You yeah. know, there was oh, yeah. so much content about, yeah, there's, here's Angular 2 and it's going to be here, but you don't have to jump right on it. Yeah. They're going to provide this bridge, these rails to continue on with 1.x until they Absolutely. said there's, uh, I think they said a majority of the people have moved over to Angular 2, then yeah. they'll start thinking about it. Yeah. So um, I'm talking about TypeScript a little bit more. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, one of the things that I think it gives us is it gives the, the Angular community uh, an ability to affect the TC39. 
because among TypeScript users, the Angular community will be the largest, like undoubtedly, right? And so, and you can't get into the TC39 without some sort of factual infilled evidence that this is the thing that helped and we liked it. So getting Angular, like, that's like the biggest horse that TypeScript could have probably fastened itself to. Right. And so fastening that to Angular and, and giving Angular like, this cutting edge thing with like unsupported syntax will help us say, hey, we want this in, in the language as well. And the TC39 is going to have to see that we're using it and like watch the results and, and react. So it, it's, it kind of gives us a larger voice in the higher level community and not just in like the user community. Right. And, and it's, it's not just a Microsoft first. thing anymore, right? Which right. gets everybody right. holding their nose. Yeah, you know, Google's lined up, but who else knows who's going to line up? But it stopped being, oh, that's just that thing that Microsoft offered us. Yeah, I have to say, you heard it here first, right? Uh, ES, ES8, optional typing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the amazing thing. You step back and look at, somebody said to you a couple months ago that Microsoft and Google were going to collaborate in a three-month time span to merge these concepts together so these could work together. I mean, people think you're nuts. Hashtag yeah. Yeah. whatever. I mean, that's, it's amazing yeah. how they must both must have gave on both sides. Full story, bro. Think of that story. True story, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, when they came out with that script last year, I was just crestfallen because it looked like browser wars transported to uh, the JavaScript language. And now we were going to have to face... And, and, and by the way, all the people who are looking for a way to say, don't get into uh, uh, client-side programming, we're, we're grasping at these kinds of things. They said, see, 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 they're all going all their separate ways. Browser flavor wars of the again. week. Yep. Yeah, yeah, flavor of the week. Da -da 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 -da, you know? So for these guys to come together and say, no, 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 we're going to consolidate. We're going to bring our interests together again so, so we have something we can all get behind. It's uh, not just great. words, you know, that's what I like yeah. is they, they keep saying, you know, let's reach out, let's, let's end yeah. this controversy between Ember and React and all these guys. Mm -hmm. But it's not just words, it's action. That's what I like. Yeah. Testify. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, Can and I that's, have an amen? Yeah. Amen, brother. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the other thing, you know, we're, we're talking about ad script versus TypeScript and how they brought that together. But then they talked about how they brought in people from Ember CLI and yep. some of these other projects. And, you know, they're, they're using a lot of these same concepts and a lot of the same code. To, to get stuff done, and they're saying, look, there really isn't this uh, animosity between them. You know, use what you want, and we're all going to raise the, the bar on everything together so that you can build your apps the way you want to build them. And I, I find that in a lot of cases, people get really, really get attached to Angular or Ember or whatever, <clears throat> and, you know, and then they get disappointed because Ember doesn't have this feature that Angular has, but... You know, if the performance comes up on all of them, if everything comes up on all of them, then the web gets better, our lives all get better, mm -hmm. and we can collaborate with people and, and learn things from people that we wouldn't be able to before. That was really deep. So the other really, for me, really important thing that happened here was to revisit the migration story mm -hmm. and the relative importance of development in Angular 1 dot anything and 2.0. Because it was very hard for them to articulate how wonderful 2.0 is without casting a shadow over one. And I think that they had a chance to rethink, about, rethink that and do two things. One, to reemphasize how great 1.x is and how that continues to evolve as long as the community wants to drive it. So if somebody comes to me in today and says 2.0 is not here and 1 is going to be remaindered, I guess I should sit on my hands and do nothing. I say no. 1.x is great stuff. You should start there. It's got conceptual co so the emphasize conceptual yep. Yep. continuity of 1 to 2. Syntactic's right. different, but conceptual continuity. You can get started today in 1, even if you've never done anything, and you're on a great route. And the router is the first tangible aspect yeah. of that that you can use. The, the NG new, new, new router. Yeah, well, we're going to fix that. <laughs> but animate Love 2. Love that router. And the animate 2 stuff, that animate stuff yes. uh, was from Matthias was fantastic. Yeah. So they really brought that home. Secondly... They talked substantively about the migration story. Yeah. Uh, you got to go look at that keynote and realize that it's not all Big Bang. I don't have to throw everything away. They've got roadmaps. We've got yeah. roadmaps for figuring out how to take an existing application that is you know, mostly one and get it where we need it to be if it's a desktop app. So in the past, we heard him say, you will be able to migrate. But I feel like I saw the set. Saw it. Because yeah. saw it. I was always like, well, how do they both live on the same page? How's, how's a new NGRP going to work with an old one? Well, today we saw they're completely different. Right. So they can live on the same they're page. They're going to live right. on the same so, page. So like, it's not a complete rewrite of your app to go to one to two. You, 
You can rewrite it in bits. You yeah. can rewrite today this one, tomorrow the next one. And Brian Ford had that great graphic where he showed you rewriting piecelets of your app from the one to the new. So that for me kind of like, it made me like feel better about there will be a migration path as opposed to forcing us to do a full rewrite. That's, another, th that's killer. Then there's another thing. All right, that has to do with the migration, which I think is, is critical. Is what kind of investment are they making here? First, you've got Pete running one. So they got a member of their own guy. They didn't just like far outsource one development. It's still part of the Angular team that's, that's around it. Secondly, they're putting Igor. Igor is taking it on himself to make sure that there is a migration path. Right. So they didn't just like hand it down to an intern. They gave it to, to one of the founders of the product mm -hmm. to make sure that we have our answers as we try and figure out how to cross over. And they and thought about how to measure all this stuff, too, which is really important. Bingo. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then they're enlisting people in the community to start building migration mapping, begin talking about how we're going to get from, from one place to another. And I'm sure that the evolution path for one itself, right, 1.5, 1.6, is all about how can I keep your one goodness but get you moving in such a way that that, that translation is there. Right. For business developers, I don't want to talk enterprise, I want to talk business. Anybody, small companies also make these long-term investments. Yeah. They got to know that they can hold it and then they can get there incrementally to the new place. Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're not touching it. Not wasting their money. Well, the, the other thing with the migration and the reasons for migration you know, it comes down to we know what you're trying to do with it. We know what you, what you wish it did better. We know where some of the barriers to entry are. And so we're going to eliminate as much of that stuff as we can and make things better for you that way. And so then as you move up from 1.3 to 1.4 to 1.5 to 1.6 and you find that you still have those issues or you want to avoid some of the things that 2.0 solves for you, then it's an easier transition just to move up and take advantage of it. Yes, this like is... Sorry. Go ahead, John. Sorry, I just want to say, I, again, just stepping back from and thinking about this conversation, which is great, and I, and I agree with all of it, is that, again, you look back three, four months ago, and what was the community spirit? Oh, yeah. It was, there's not going to be a 1.4, there's not going to be the sky's any falling. path, the whole sky's right. falling. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got, got to run. It's completely different. I can't. Heaven yeah. forbid JavaScript's going to change, and nothing else changes in this industry except Regular, Regular, right? It's right. the only <laughs> one that's <laughs> changing. The only thing that's changing. So, that's but right. it's just a different spirit and a different attitude. Right. And I think the message... I honestly feel like the message was the same. It's just they did it better. Oh, yeah. I don't think these guys changed their minds. I, th I, I got the impression right. that this was just a and more, more well thought out. Yeah. More, more information as well. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 not and so it, much darkness, not so much lack of knowledge, but actually, yes, we are. This is important. Well, they showed us code. Yeah. yeah. So you're looking at it and you're going, okay, that makes sense. You know, we're, given what I know about Angular 1, that makes sense for Angular 2. We're going to see some more code this afternoon. Dave Smith... He's got some benchmarks between Angular 1x to React, and then he's going to even drop some other bombs from React to 2.0 that yeah, may surprise yeah. a lot of people. And so that was awesome. Kind of, I want to go back to what you were, your whole migration story that, that you were excited about. There was another, like, I like that they gave us their, they explained to us their strategy to gauge when will we taper off 1x. And they're like, hey, AngularJS.org is Angular 1x. And Angular.io, this is Angular 2. And there's two different sites. We're going to use GitHub and the traffic on these two sites to gauge when we're ready to taper off of 1x and when we're ready to put more people onto 2.0. And so it's pretty cool to see them. Um, mm -hmm. Like they explain to us, oh, as long as I keep downloading it and using the docs, that's my voice saying, please keep this going. And so. It, it's pretty cool that they, like they, they told us that we're going to listen to you this way. This is how you make us hear you. So, yep. th I think that should make people feel better. Yeah. It should. And think and think about what what else that says. That says we're not jamming 2.0 down your throat, yep. right? Because no, no, no. We in 2.0, we have to win your hearts. You can stay 1x until we win the community. Yeah. It's 1.x. Yeah. 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 Well said. Yeah. Yep. So I think we. I'd like to uh, switch a little bit and talk. Um, maybe about events and stuff. So, like, who went to anything on Wednesday? The pre-conference day. Workshops, hack, hack night. Lucas? Luke. I was teaching. Sorry. Lucas teaching. was teaching. <laughs> I was doing the workshop. all you were doing on yeah. Wednesday. Just running my mouth. <laughs> did anybody go Wednesday night to anything? I did. Oh, why? I don't sensei. know what I did this morning, much less Wednesday at this point. All right. So, Wednesday was work workshops. Wednesday night was, like, a lot of different things. What did you go to, Lucas? Uh, I was speaking. You were, you were speaking... <laughs> 
I went to the Aaron Frost 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm really tired and I'm still working. We jammed out at 3 a.m. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Technically, that was Tuesday, though, so oh, he asked oh, Wednesday. Oh, yeah, that was Tuesday. <laughs> was it? Wow, it's a blur. All right. So, well, uh, I didn't know we needed to go all the way back to Tuesday and talk about Tuesday's NGConf events. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> no, I said thir- I said Tuesday. I'm st- I'm so tired. Yeah, I meant Thursday. Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh. Get yeah. some rest, bro. Tuesday yeah. was dinner and a movie. Oh, that's but, right. Uh, so I have to ask. I didn't know this up front, and I'll I'll claim ignorance for just being an old guy. Mm-hmm. Walking around, there's a narwhal, a wizard, a, a, a wizard. shrimp. No, no, a spectral lobster. A spectral lobster. lobster. I didn't pick it. up on yeah. the relationship until about a day and a half into the event of what yeah. those things meant. You want to explain yeah. everybody what these odd-looking creatures mean? So. For anybody that's gone and looked at the change log for Angular, they name each release with these crazy whacked out names. Well, they're superhero names, so they're not crazy whacked out. Sure, they're a sure. If you are a potential story, superpower, let's say that. If that's your story, I'll let you. I'll let you go with that. Okay. <laughs> if it helps you sleep at night. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had so, to have somebody explain it to me. So, so we have a narwhal because there was a release called Prophetic Narwhal, and we have a wizard on stilts. Because there was a release called Wizard Props. And we have, we, we actually, we missed the point on wi- uh, unicorn hydrification. Yeah, we thought it was like a, was a, it's a secret. liquefying yeah. a, secret. Don't a unicorn. Don't tell anybody here. <laughs> we thought it was liquefying a unicorn, but it's Hydra. Yeah. Hydra with yeah. like multiple with headed unicorns. So there's a spelling yeah. difference in there. Hydrification with an I, yeah. which is why D-R-I is about water. Hydrification with an A obviously <laughs> means multiple heads. Like Hashtag hydrophobia. English. But wow. I know. How could we miss that? that? that yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was wondering why I had a unicorn jumping out of water on yeah. my badge yeah. first. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hydrification. Unicorn hydrification. I feel bad for yeah. the poor lobster, actually. I went and got in the head and said, tell me what you are. He's like, yeah. I can't tell you. Go talk to Sonny. Yeah. <laughs> so now I know. So, so is that all? Yeah. Yeah. We, we well, the spooky all? giraffe. Spooky giraffe. Yeah. yeah. Creepy. And... Um, I think, that's, I think you mentioned that. And so the prophetic narwhal, yeah. the spectral lobster. And so they were dancing stickers. on this stage. Oh, well, night. so the Ro- which, which one the are Robo you? The Funky Dance Blasters. Oh, yeah. I, I was that crazy Dance. rock lobster thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I, 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 no, I thought you were one of them in the outfit. Oh, so. very funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Everybody's got one on there. shiny um, enough. <laughs> little bell. All right, so one thing that surprised me about Wednesday was we organized some open spaces, and it was kind of last minute. I threw it together, sent a bunch of emails, and I kind of expected to not see much participation. I showed up at 7.45, and like this one room was full. There was like 30, 30 people around a circle of chairs of about 10 people talking about, I think it was testing. And I was really surprised to see that, wow, a ton of people had gone up there because they were topics they really wanted to talk about. So I'm, I really like that, and I hope that we can expand upon that next year. Mm-hmm. The opportunity to, for people to say, this is a topic I want to talk about. I know that there's tons of awesome talks that are going to be there, and they're probably going to address a lot of my concerns, but this is a topic I specifically want to talk about. So they just name the topic, and anybody that wants to talk about that shows up. So I got yeah. in a conversation about keeping up to date with Angular 2, and David East gave some great information about that. Another conversation about getting your kids interested in programming. Uh, I had a really good time. How yeah, is, kids um, track was great. I, I really like that you guys do that. Yeah, that was another new yeah, thing this cool. year was the kids track. Yeah. Yeah. The, How the kids is, uh, speaking of which, sorry, NG Extended. How was that going? So we had Oh my gosh, so much interest. better than we thought. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it, did you even think it would be like this? No, we had we had approaching 10,000 people. Ooh. Yeah. In, like we we wow. do today have 29 many, countries. Yeah, and over, that was over just, 27 countries. Yeah. Uh, we yeah, it's it, the, the organizers have been amazing, getting sponsors on their own to pay for T-shirts and food and and just organizing. We hang we hung out live with Poland and um, with DC, but but they're just all over. I mean, there there's one that looks like it's in the middle of the ocean, but it's the Canary Islands off of the off of yeah. Africa, right? Wow, right. So wow, right. so these are organized Everywhere. events for NG either Canary, like that, yeah. Yeah. or <laughs> other external people to I come to, that and that's on top of just people that just tune into the stream because they're sitting at work and yeah. want to watch the stream. Man, well, it's it's so overwhelming. Local. It's so overwhelming that I had to check myself in to your your childcare section there. I had to go in there and play with some Lego blocks. Just to <laughs> deep you Aren't, you're not allowed within thir- 300 yards of the NG. Yeah. <laughs> I think that got expunged from his record. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I want to... I want to oh, that hurt. I want to switch again and ask uh, every, everybody to go through and say, so far, what's your favorite moment, the moment you'll remember so far from the conference? Aaron, start with you. Um, I'm on the spot. I'm on the wheel. Um, Shy's talk... I've, I've, I've never really seen a standing ovation. And 
I don't know about you. I was a little nervous about Shai's talk. Yeah. Like, the WAP thing is a big bar to live up when, to. When we, when we picked yeah. it, we were like, hey, uh, it's got to be amazing. Like, yeah. You can't limp into it this It was an one. unknown. So we hoped it would be awesome, and the dude it didn't feel the delivery. It was just top-notch. And he ended it with, like, a real loving embrace to the community, right? Yeah. Well, I think the case of Red Bull that he drank right before that was helpful. Probably helpful. <laughs> well, he didn't sleep the night before, so I don't know what he was Note on. Yourself. Go drink Red Bull immediately. <laughs> Chuck, how about you? It was amazing. So um, I think one of the things that really stood out to me was during the keynote uh, yesterday morning um, when they showed the performance. I don't even remember what it was for, table scrolling, something. I don't even know. I'm not even sure if I knew what it meant. But, you know, they showed the, the linear progression with, you know, however many you had. And then, you know, it's like, and then we made it better. And then if you use the, I think it was immutable state or caching, it was like, Constant time, right? Order yeah, one. right. Order, order the one, which is awesome. Order one, yeah, and it was just, I w- you know, that that's amazing. I mean, you know, all of the things that we are learning as a JavaScript community are things that the core team's embracing, and we're going to get it. And that that was exciting for me. Awesome, John. Yeah, I, I agree. For me, a lot of it is is the community. So I got to see a lot of old friends at this show. Um, you guys here. Yeah, old. buddy. We haven't met before personally, Charles. It's the first time I actually met face yep. to face. But also meeting people like Dan Wallin again. And some of these yeah. guys I don't get to see unless I'm at the circuits. And new friends, too. I met a lot of new people, like Shy. I uh, had breakfast the other day. It was, it was great. And so to me, a lot of the value of the events is the connections I get to make with people, uh, less so than the sessions. Um, yeah. Sorry, right. but it's the yeah. people. No, that's awesome. That's we we as organizers we love hearing that as much as we love hearing anything else. That's we got we spend a lot of time. We want the sessions to be awesome, but we also want people to to connect and we want the fun to be awesome. And even the people who aren't here, like the people on Twitter and on the live stream, I keep hearing the feedback over the social media about this conference, and mm-hmm. it's going. So really JP, well. if you thought this year was great, next year we got a plan in the works to enhance what you just said. La- by a lot, by a lot. Like to take Sweet. to take to attack that like way majorly. It's going to be awesome. And you heard it here first. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, oh, you heard it here first. Like, <laughs> you t- totally. NGConf 2016 is going to be. You heard the Vegas what you just com- said, like, comment ever. Really, really, first. really amped up. Awesome. Well, along great. the lines of of talking about the extended thing, I ran into a few local folks that I know, and I'm like, so you're here at the conference, and they're like. No, I was going to the extended, and I came over here to see what was going on. Uh, yeah, and so awesome. I mean, it's it's really coming through just how awesome this is, Lucas. So I'm just going to piggyback on what John said. It's just I think just meeting everybody. I've met hundreds and hundreds of great, interesting people, and um, just even and I'm going to be giving a talk about it this afternoon about just not being afraid, putting yourself out there. And so I write a lot of blog posts, and every time I hit publish, it's like oh. This is so stupid. Like, why am I doing this? Publish. Oh, like, I hope this doesn't They're blow all going to laugh at They're you. They're all going to laugh at me. But it's really just awesome to hear people like, hey, I had this problem, and you wrote this blog post, and it saved me hours of time. And so just that interaction of just realizing, mm-hmm. like, I'm not living in a vacuum, but, you know, people that I have friends out there that actually enjoy things that I put out, and I get even good feedback of, like, this thing was good, but not so great. And you can actually get those feedback loops. So just meeting everybody has been awesome. Maybe there's just other people in your vacuum. Yeah, that's yeah. we're <laughs> this, all in a vacuum. This profession, what, well, what you're saying my is, vacuum. we're no, it's no longer a profession for a total introverts, right? It gives yeah. an opportunity for introverts yeah. to be social and to talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, I think it's great. Yeah. Well, I don't get that because I'm a freelancer. I work at home by myself, and so this is terrific that way too. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, for me, this is not going to come as any big surprise. Look, but, although I could probably name five experiences that I believe I will remember all entire, all my life. Loved Kavehi last night. Her performance was so awesome. But yeah, that was crazy. Of course, for me, my, the highlight was getting to see my daughter speak. Dad may uh-huh. have got a little bit misty. Dude, I don't even, up I, right now? I don't even know her very well, your daughter. I've seen her a couple of times. I teared up. Me too. Because she was like doing... Tribute to my dad, and it was pretty cool. I've had it was just awesome, man. Thank really, you. thank you. I've had so many people like on Twitter say the same thing. Like, I actually got emotionally affected seeing you know your daughter up there speaking, and it inspired me to for you know whatever. She's becoming a role model for young girls, and as a father of three young daughters, it's it's something that yeah. I, I I want them yeah. to watch yeah. too, right. to yeah. see what they can do. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And it gets you excited about okay. So she's been doing this for a few years now. You know, when can I get my kids involved? You know, at ten or twelve or fourteen or yeah, yeah. Know. And I love the fact that she was able to show something that 
very few people would think is possible, which is, hey, you know, normally it's like you've got to learn HTML, CSS, then some JavaScript, and then maybe after a while you can start doing something complex like Angular. And it's like, no, you can start off with something really crazy because you can show kids, get them interested. Right? Yeah, the NG show hide concept is so simple. Your daughter was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Work? Well, I have to say that was one of the most affecting moments for me, too. And uh, Shy was the big production, yeah. but your daughter, uh, met, her presentation meant a lot to me. Uh, and I hope it uh, encourages people out there. So, if, uh, so I agree with every, what everybody else said, so I'll go back to tech. Uh, I was very interested in Mishko's talk on data binding. There has been a tremendous amount of um, concern about the change and what it is, how it is that you mark up the templates and all the things that are going away and what seemed to be crazy new syntax. I thought, uh, you know, this is something that people should go view his talk and uh, see what's behind uh, the changes because I felt a lot better about them. Yes. There's still one thing that's uh, bothering me. Uh, so I'll, I hate to be Debbie Downer, but it's still bothering me. So All requests. Or time. you've never been known to pull a punch. Yeah, well, I got I got a tall one. <laughs> and we're out of time. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's the show. Uh, 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 quick uh, tips. Oh, I, I, I'm going to get it. Up. To clarify, you're talking about the upsetness people had over the what's going on two-way data binding. Well, right? that's where I'm going now because yeah. they still didn't really talk. They've been dancing around two-way data binding. They danced through it this whole time uh, yep. in this session. They still didn't talk about it. We and saw everything else. We saw everything else. And so if you look at all these demos and these 2.0 demos, there's very, very little user input. Now, I don't know how you folks out there in the audience are using Angular, but most of the time the applications that I'm engaged in are forms over data type apps mm -hmm. where somebody has to type something in. All right. All right. Now, I'm, um, so let's be clear. You know, if they're, if they're killing two-way data binding, I don't care and neither should anybody else. The problem is not... We don't build applications to have two-way data binding, but we do build applications that take user input. How are they going to do that? They didn't really talk about that substantively. I know what I don't want to see, which is what I've seen in other frameworks, where you have to go through a lot of SERUS, a lot of manipulation, oh, yeah. just to attach to right. each single control, because that ain't going to fly. One of the great figure out which event to tie to it, yeah. it recognize the changes. No, no, no. I don't so want to hear that. So that stuff, <laughs> they got to come up with something. There's some awesome feedback is that people want to see, hey, show me a working form. Show me some form stuff. Yeah. Show it yeah. to me. Yeah. And I think they can do that pretty easily. I, I think, you know, to give them props, they showed us a lot of good stuff today. We saw actual code, as, as Chuck said, but we need to see that. That's yeah. a key piece, because think about people who jump into Angular. One of the first things they did, especially from if you came from the knockout world, because Knockout had these observables you had to create, and it was kind of a mess. You had to, you had to dirty up your model to get there. In Angular, it was like, just take my JSON, and I'm happy. Right. Yeah. So we need to see what's that next. I, I don't want to go work. backwards on that one. Right. Loved every, I loved the way he clarified in a way that I've never seen done all the changes they're doing for data binding and, and markup, but this is a gaping hole. I know they got to face it. I know we got to learn about it, but I was missing. I kept waiting for it, and it didn't come. They went 99 yards. They got a yard. That's right. Yard. That's right. No touchdown yet. <laughs> and forms ain't one of them. <laughs> Forms A1. Yeah. Not yet. I do have to say, though, that I'm pretty excited to see what they're doing in May 2015 <coughs> when they start moving internal Google apps over to Angular 2. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at that point, what they're saying is, is that, yeah, it may not be ready for prime time, but it's going to be good enough to build stuff in. So I'm going to change topic a little bit, take that liberty. Um, so Igor really wants us to focus here, not on their team as much, but on the community as a whole. Uh -huh. So I'm actually going to pick another talk from the community that I loved. Okay. And it was by Scott Moss. Oh, yeah. And he got up and he's like, 18 months ago, my life was hard. And then I learned to program and now I'm like a senior developer at Udacity. And I was like, I suck at life. If he went that far in 18 months, like, we all need everything. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then he gave an epic it was talk such a just talk. Amazing. about, oh, hey, Sasquatch is real. And you're like, dude, this it's is going to so be funny great. too. Yeah. And he did awesome. And so that, that was another one I'll never forget. He did awesome. Mm. Cool. cool. This, the community really came out swinging here, right? Yep. Whether it's the Microsoft team, whether it's the, um, the uh, Netflix team, whoever it is that's out here swinging, they're doing great, man. I'm really yeah. proud of the community. So we're at 30 minutes. Do you guys want to take a few more minutes or should we wrap up? I need to go practice. <laughs> yeah. I've got a talk in a half hour. Yeah. 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 Wow. I say let's uh, wrap it, make okay. some picks. Okay. Oh, picks? picks? Wow. Should we picks. do picks? Yeah.
Yeah. Sure. All Let's right. pick. All right. Let's do picks. Should we just start over here and end yeah, over there? Yeah. yeah. Start over on that end. All right, dude. I've got to think of something. I'll start on this end. All right. I'll go first. I'm going to pick Woot.com because they just sold. They, they sold me a broken TV. I sent it back, and then they stopped selling them, so I couldn't get it again. But then they sold me now the new 4K version of it. So I actually got a better TV just because wow. of an error. Anyway, so Woot.com. And I'm also going to pick, again, Ready Player One. I read it again recently, and my awesome. brain exploded thinking about like a movie where you're on the set of Family Ties in like a mech suit. It's going to be crazy. So, anyway, yeah, uh, Ready Player One. Those are my picks. Awesome. I'm going to pick quadcopters. Hint, hint. Yeah. <laughs> if you can rig that deck, any. And then no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I've been I've been reading a lot of books lately. One book that I just read that I really liked was Dreamers and Deceivers by Glenn Beck. Just some great stories in there. Just historical stuff. Another pick that I have is another book that I've been reading lately. It's uh, 8020 Marketing by Perry Marshall. I think I might have picked it on the show before. But it's really interesting to see how 80% of your success comes from 20% of your work and how that applies to programming as well as business. So, huh. so yeah, so two books. I know that's true. I just don't know how to find that 20%. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to measure. And, and it's like code stuff, right? I mean, some things is like, okay, I can see how many users came because I set an event every time they logged in. And other stuff, it's really hard to figure out, okay, you know, where's the quality code? Which of these things matter? It's, it's yeah. And you have to learn how to identify those things and take advantage of them. Yeah, I've got uh, two picks. And there, one is about, my kids recently have been involved in theater and drama at school, and they've been... Uh, doing really well in the, the drama departments they have. And what's really struck me is how much confidence now my kids have grown through this. And these are programs that are always constantly every year under struggle of financial strain and trying to keep them going and moving. And I just think it's, it's one of those things we all have to pay more attention to is not just fostering coding, but fostering whatever the kids really want to get into moving forward, even if there's not a monetary gain right there. Right. It's, it's just given my kids so much confidence to, to go on to, to do things with theater. Uh, and then on the, the uh, more of the technology side, and what we live and do, earlier this week or last weekend, a couple has got to see Nancy Duarte uh, speak. Oh, that was fun. And is amazing. If you haven't heard her speak before, it was one of the most moving, awesome uh, presentations I have ever seen. Uh, just gave a really effective way to get across how to give presentations, how to, more importantly, affect or influence people. And her book is called Resonate, and I think it's really worth... Uh Oh, yeah. Take a look at that. Awesome She's book. got a good, awesome good tips for role models for uh, young children, too. Hmm. So um, my choice is, uh, Aaron mentioned Scott Moss. I actually work with him at Udacity, and I had an opportunity to uh, spend two days prototyping with him last week, and he just he killed it. So it was, it was really cool to see somebody who, you know, 18 months ago was just in a hard place, learn how to program, and you can get into the trenches. And it just really inspired me to, like, maybe I'm not asking enough from myself as a developer. Um, another one is, is Jeff Goodman. I'm going to be giving a talk with him this afternoon. And I'm not going to give the punchline away, but he has literally compelled me to be the best programmer that I can be because he's completely unqualified. He completely taught himself, and I'm not going to get too much into it, but I love people that are motivated, self-taught, and they, they are using programming to change their lives, and it makes me realize I can change my life even more and do better and affect that change. Right. Awesome. I'm going to pick, first off, the chocolate malts here at the Little America Hotel. Some of the best chocolate malts I've ever had. Mm -hmm. I try to, have, try to limit myself to just one a day, but <laughs> they are awesome. So if you happen to live here or if you're ever passing through and you want a really great chocolate malt, this is the place to come. If you happen to live here and he looks at me, yeah. you're missing out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to pick that. And I want to pick also StarCraft 2 because we're having the StarCraft 2 tournament tonight. I love StarCraft 2, and I can't wait to see two professional StarCraft players in the flesh duking it out after the amateurs have their little have their tournament. You know, to watch real live professional StarCraft players who I love watching duking it out for all of us to enjoy and watch. So that's my second pick, StarCraft awesome. 2. Okay, my first pick is a shout out to Funk and Flash a store in Sebastopol, California, where I can get my shirts and things like that. So if you ever wonder, a lot of people ask me, where do you get that stuff? And that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the places, Funk and Flash. My technical shout-out is that they're... Uh, okay, so uh, Angular 2.0 is alpha now. 
they're going to wise up and uh, you know try it out, see how it really plays, uh, and by May or somewhere around there, they expect to be able to come back and tell us how it's really going. And there'll be some conferences that are available. Joe, you're running one. Tell, tell them what me it is. More. It's called NG Vegas. It's May seventh and eighth. It's actually not in the heart of Vegas. It's up in Henderson, just a, just above, uh, up in the hills on a mm-hmm. Lake Las Vegas, which is where Celine Dion has her house. So there's like one side of the lake is all these crazy huge houses. The other side is these awesome resort spas. So I'm really excited about the venue because it's a fun venue, pools and a beach and paddle boards and stuff like that. And what I really like about it is we can actually, in the call for papers, have people submitting Angular 2 topics, which is something we couldn't do for NGConf, right? The Angular team got to come and talk about Angular 2, but everybody that submitted a talk, if they maybe got to incorporate some Angular 2 into their talk, but their talk couldn't be about Angular 2 because there really wasn't anything in November about Angular 2, and now there is. So I'm really excited for that, and I hope that we see a vast majority of our talks about Angular 2 in some capacity or another. And uh, so the second talk, I'm going to, uh, the second conference is Angular U. It'll be in San Francisco. The, yes. the, the Angular team will be there talking about their findings, and we'll also have more people talking about what they've learned, uh, working their way through um, the evolution of, yeah. of it. And I, I know I will be there. And uh, when's that? That's in June, isn't it? Late June. Late June. Late June. So um, tickets are available for both of these conferences, and if you are looking to get hip with what's going on, you got to sign up for some tickets. And I want to let you know yeah. that I will be there speaking. Fabulous. That's going to be great. It'll be good to see you there. Well, no, I have to come. You do? I do. Please come. Yeah. yeah, that one's going to be awesome. In the mecca of our industry. Right. <laughs> so folks, go out there and get some tickets. Planning a pilgrimage? Yes, I am going to take a pilgrimage. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, um, I don't think we have any announcements or anything, so thanks to our live studio audience. and uh, Yeah! <laughs> we'll talk to you all next week. And cut. This episode is sponsored by Mad Glory. You've been building software for a long time, and sometimes it gets a little overwhelming. Work piles up, hiring sucks, and it's hard to get projects out the door. Check out Mad Glory. They're a small shop with experience shipping big products. They're smart, dedicated, will augment your team, and work as hard as you do. Find them online at madglory.com or on Twitter at madglory. Hosting and bandwidth provided by the Blue Box Group. Check them out at bluebox.net. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y.com to learn more. Do you want to have conversations with the Adventures in Angular crew and their guests? Do you want to support the show? Now you can. Go to adventuresinangular.com slash forum and sign up today.